Hi guys, welcome back to another column here. Uh, Mike Dawes here at Guitar World Headquarters in New York. It's great to be back. Um, I want to talk to you today a little bit about um, a technique that's, uh, I guess, colloquially, colloquially known as uh, lap tapping. And um, this is a technique that um, I kind of stumbled across when I accidentally discovered that my mother had uh, dropped my Les Paul and uh, the headstock had fallen off. It's a little bit of a weird story. Basically, I was playing electric guitar when I was about 16, 17, and uh, the headstock had fallen off. Thanks, Mum. It's okay, I still love you. Um, and uh, what happened was the headstock was being glued back on, and as it was being glued back on, it was stuck on the dining room table like this. At the time, I was studying music from um, people like Pierre Ben Susan um, in France, um, and I discovered Dadgad tuning, which is a tuning that we've used a lot in these issues before. Um, so I decided as the guitar was here and it couldn't be moved and it was completely flat, I would tune the guitar to dadgad tuning. Okay. And what I discovered was that uh, my perception of what a guitar is completely changed. Instead of uh, seeing scale shapes and, and chord shapes and box shapes, um, I was looking at six pianos, you know, all in a row. Uh, six chromatic lines, basically. And I discovered that I could get major and minor arpeggios just by tapping uh, notes like this without actually picking at all, just hammering the root, the fifth, and the third, or minor third. And um, soon after this, I started creating pieces of music played in this style, where the left hand was playing the bass and the right hand was playing the lead lines, just like you would uh, on a piano piece. In fact, I played keyboard at school, so maybe that's where that came from. And um, I do want to give a shout out to the wonderful Mr. Uh, Eric Mongrain, or if I pronounce this correctly, Eric Mongrain. I hope, I'm sorry, I'm not French. Uh, my girlfriend is French and she hates it whenever I try and speak French. Um, he's a wonderful French-Canadian guitarist, a good friend of mine who is known for playing in this style. And after I, I um, figured this stuff out, I, I hit a few open mic nights, got turned on to his music, and he does some amazing stuff in this style. So if you're interested in learning more beyond this column about this style, do check out Eric Mongrain on YouTube. All right, let's get stuck in. Let me show you how this kind of thing works, all right? Here we go. Okay, so the first thing I did when I uh, was experimenting with this style is I figured out major and minor arpeggios, just like this. We're on the fifth fret right here. If I tap this uh, bottom string, uh, which again, we're tuned to dadgad, I'm gonna get this G note. That's gonna be the root of our chord. If I tap the fifth above on the same fret, I get a nice power chord. And then if I hop over the D string here, so ignore the D string, go straight for the G string on fret four, so five, five, four, we have root, fifth, and third, okay? Now, you'll notice that I'm using my thumb just here to sort of help with uh, some leverage, you know, um, help with the power. I rest my thumb just below where I'm playing on the, uh, the back of the neck, and that really helps with accuracy in the same way that you would rest your thumb on the top of the neck if you were doing sort of uh, some Van Halen tapping stuff, okay? So rest the thumb, that'll help with the power. At first, your muscles will start to hurt a little bit, but you will get used to it, and it does help to have a very low action for this, of course, especially for this next chord, because if I'm gonna flatten the third to make a minor chord, okay, so moving the uh, G string note down to the third fret, I'm gonna need to use my pinky. So that's tapping on an acoustic guitar with your pinky. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but you will get used to it, okay? So I want you to try this example. We're gonna be doing a G, an A, and a B minor. Here we go. Okay, so a nice little three chord sequence there, using two major chords and one minor chord. Now, much like on a piano, the left hand would be doing this kind of chord stuff. So we're gonna stick to that sort of basic piano philosophy and create some trebly stuff, some melodic stuff with this hand, with the, uh, with the right hand, okay? And uh, I'm gonna be looking at harmonics. Now, a lot of you will be familiar with artificial harmonics, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing here. I'm using my first finger to touch the 12th fret and my second finger is picking the harmonic. For some of you, this will be a new technique. Just stick at it, you'll get used to it very quickly. Okay, so once you've practiced that and you've got the strength built up, 
in your left hand, we're going to add in some harmonics with this hand. Uh, much like on a piano, the left hand would handle the bass and the right hand would handle the melody. So that's what we're going to do now with some harmonics. We're going to pick some natural harmonics to begin with on the 12th fret. And that's done with this one-handed technique that will be familiar to some of you, but uh, unfamiliar to others. We're going to place our first finger over the harmonic point on any of the strings, this example being the D string. And our second finger, nail, is going to pick the string. Okay, so you can pick any of these natural harmonics with one hand. Now, another style of uh, attacking harmonics in this lap style, this sort of horizontal guitar style, um, I picked up from experimenting a little bit and um, chopping the guitar, just like this. Okay, you can actually strike with this sort of Buzz Lightyear karate chop action to get a very, very trebly um, high attack kind of harmonic effect, okay? So that's what I'd like you to do for this next exercise. You're going to be karate chopping the 12th fret, top string, harmonic, and the same at 19, which of course is a mirror image of 7. Okay? So, here we go. Okay, once you're comfortable with that, we're going to play this pattern based around the G chord. Hammering onto the strings and pulling off the A string and D string, okay? Practice that until you're comfortable with it. Then we're going to add in some harmonics and create a nice little melody. So what I was doing there was adding in some natural harmonics with one hand on the D and A strings. Remember we're in Dadgad, so the second string is an A string. I was doing the little karate chops on 12 and 19. Then another natural harmonic. This one's over the fretboard, okay, on 24 on the G string. And then I was concluding the melody by jumping in and tapping this note here, okay, on the D string. Then I was repeating the same melody, but instead of harmonics, I was picking the open strings. Because even though we're flat, we can still pick the guitar as we would normally, but we can do it over any part of the guitar surface, okay? So combining all of these ideas uh, gives you a lot of tools to write music in this style. And that's what we're gonna look at right now. I'm gonna show you a little musical exercise combining all of these techniques that um, hopefully you'll be able to learn, play, and enjoy. So here we go. Two, three, five. Okay, let's take a look at what was going on right there. So. I start by hammering this sort of E minor 11 style shape, but I'm also picking the G string to begin, okay? So I'm hammering the second fret notes with the left hand, picking the G string at the same time as that first note, and then tapping that F sharp, okay? Then the left hand is coming over to help with the melody, okay? You don't just have to play bass and uh, melody in the two different hands, you can combine. Filling the space there with another picked G string. And then pulling off that F sharp before pulling off that top string note and maybe even getting the A string as a little ghost note as well. Okay. This pattern repeats. But the last note chop harmonics over the 12th fret, okay? Then we're going to move to this sort of C add 9 kind of shape. Same pattern as before. Except 
have some of the frets change. Instead of hammering 2-2, two, two, we're hammering 3-2 on the A string and D string. And the little run at the end is 5-4-0, and then 5 again, this time on the A string, okay? Then we have this sort of G add 9 with a B in the bass uh, kind of chord. Pretty self-explanatory there, if you can see that okay. And then we finish with this very spooky sort of E flat with the tritone in there as well. Again, this is a technique you need to get used to within this, is picking the strings and tapping notes with the same finger. second time we have a little variation where I've just been slapping the bottom string, you'll see that in the tab. Then we have this octave slide where I'm tapping two notes okay, at the same time on the same, on the same fret. Now this is something about an open guitar tuning that's very very handy, is that as opposed to Van Halen style tapping when you're tapping horizontally all over the guitar neck, you can do octaves and fifths. I think we've talked about this in a previous column as well. So here I have two octaves on the D strings, sliding down to fret four from fret five, and pulling off, okay? At the end, I just concluded with a sort of E minor 11 thing with another F sharp on the top there, okay? So guys, good luck with that. I hope that's useful for you. Um, please do check it out. I mean, th this really helped me with the sort of um, changing my approach to how I perceive the guitar, you know, looking at it as six lines rather than box shapes. I think that's as much of a valuable lesson from this. So um, I will sign off now. It's been a pleasure to see you again. And...